The gaming industry is in a state of disaster. There are so many developers out there who attack the very people they need to swipe their credit cards. And of course, there are so many higher ups at companies who are completely out of touch with what audiences actually want. But now a Baldur's Gate 3 developer is blasting Ubisoft sales strategy, saying if gamers should get used to not owning their games, then developers must get used to not having jobs. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, it's been a saying in the gaming industry for a while now, if buying a game means you don't really own it, then pirating a game means you're not really stealing it. I understand that, yes, we need developers to make money so that we can continue to get games, but the problem is that it's so hard hard to support a lot of the development studios right now because they do not care about what gamers actually want. I totally and completely get that devs need to be passionate about their work and they need to love their work to a certain extent, but they're not creating games for themselves. They're creating games for gamers and it's like they're completely disregarding what we are saying and what we want in our titles and the way that the industry should go in our opinion opinions and this individual completely gets that. So Michael Douse, the director of publishing for Baldur's Gate 3 and its developer Larian Studios, blasted Ubisoft in the wake of a number of blunders, including The Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which is rumored to have seen its developer team disbanded after not meeting sales expectations. I did another video on this. It will be linked down below, but yeah, I mean, I can completely understand why Prince of Persia, The Last Crown, was a failure. People have, you know, been waiting for the Sands of Time remake that's been delayed, delayed, delayed. I don't even think it's ever going to come out at this point. The confidence in Ubisoft is at an all-time low because of all of their flops for the year, and Prince of Persia The Lost Crown released only a few days before one of the largest video game releases of 2024, Pal World. It got absolutely decimated because of that game, and any title that released around Pal World's launch did as well. It wasn't just Prince of Persia, but I get that Ubisoft right now is trying their very best to save as much money as possible, and it is disappointing because there were people who liked this game, but on the flip side, when you are, you know, not giving us the content we want out of a franchise of this caliber, I can't say I particularly feel bad that Ubisoft lost money. It continues on talking about while Ubisoft management has made the decision to move on from the game shortly after it was released, the host claimed that some members of the core development team fought for two DLCs in an attempt to change the minds of management, but it seems that Ubisoft was pretty unconvinced on the Lost Crown getting DLC or extra content, and in reaction to the coverage of the team allegedly being disbanded by PC Gamer, Douse shared his opinion on X saying the last notable game on their platform was arguably Far Cry 6 in 2021. The crew, Mirage, and Avatar came in 2023 and didn't perform, so you can assume subscriptions were at a lull when Prince of Persia released by 2024, which means people wouldn't be launching their store all too much. If it had released on Steam, not only would it have been a market success, but there would likely be a sequel because the teams are so strong. It's a broken strategy. The hardest thing is to make an 85 plus hour game. It is much, much easier to release one. It just shouldn't be done as it was, which I completely agree with. Prince of Persia was received pretty positively by the people who played it, but it got absolutely decimated because of its launch window. Of course, Ubisoft has a track record of not releasing really great games in really great states like Avatar was the last one before Prince of Persia, so confidence was not there. And next, he actually torched Ubisoft and specifically the company's director of subscriptions for his comments back in January, where he said that gamers need to get comfortable with not owning games. If this statement, gamers should get used to not owning their games, is true because of a specific release strategy, sub-above sales, then the statement, developers must get used to 
not having jobs if they make a critically acclaimed game, platform strategy above title sales, is also true, and that just isn't sensible even from a business perspective. I mean, he is sitting here spitting facts. I hated that statement that the director of subscriptions made that gamers should get used to not owning their games. I get that it's his job to try to sell you on subscription services where you do not own your game, but companies should not be prioritizing subscription services. It's like Game Pass. I do think that it's really good for casual gamers who don't want to constantly be spending $70 on multiple games every month. Like That is not the reality that a lot of people live. It's just not something a lot of people can do. So I think that it's great to have a subscription like a Game Pass where you can play a lot of different titles. But on the flip side, I do not think that that should be the priority for these companies. They should be worried about putting a product in your hand that you actually own. And it's so sad because this just isn't the case really anymore. These companies make you log into services in order to access a game. They make you, you know, kind of jump through hoops and you don't even really own the game. It's like how on a disc, most of the time, the full game is not actually on it. Just a couple of days ago, we heard Black Myth Wukong being absolutely praised because the physical version for the Xbox is actually going to have the entire game on the disc. You do not need to download any sort of updates, which is insane. We barely hear about that happening nowadays. So him torching Ubisoft really hits home for me because it's what a lot of people have been thinking for a very long time. And there are a lot of developers out there who are afraid to speak up because they don't want to be blacklisted. They do not want to face issues within the industry. They basically want a clean track record. So if they you know, move on from a company like Larian, they'll be able to find a job somewhere else easily. And we know that a lot of these companies do skim social media accounts and they'll find every little thing that they can to use against you to not hire you if they do not like you. And of course, while his torching of Ubisoft is true and his observation that Ubisoft Plus was likely not seeing the numbers of players necessary to float the lost crown, the fact that it would release on Steam would not necessarily make it a market success. Yeah, I don't think that it would make it a giant market success, but I do definitely think that that a lot of people, again, do not want to have to go to a certain service or go and buy a certain subscription in order to play a game. They basically want to be able to load up their platform of choice and find it there. That is another issue with exclusive games. While, yes, it does end up being good for the developers on the development side because they're getting a lot of money before release in order to finish their game and polish it up, for consumers, it makes it harder to buy a game. If you don't own a PlayStation 5, but you want to play one single game on it, you're most likely just going to wait and maybe even never play it if it doesn't release on other platforms. This is a major issue, of course, that I have also talked about many times on this channel, and the game hit a peak concurrent of just 1,446 players when it finally released to Steam, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's really not a good look right now, especially in a time where this company is struggling so much. I just, yeah, don't think that this game really caught on with audiences, and we've been waiting years and years for Sands of Time. I think that will do good when it finally launches, if it is a high-quality product, because people love the Prince of Persia titles, but this one just really didn't click with gamers, and... You know, at the end of the day, that's something Ubisoft's going to have to accept, the fact that they are releasing product after product, which should be successes, but they're failures because they're just not the content that gamers actually want right now. Gamers will show up in droves to purchase games and purchase products if you give them something to be excited for, and that's just not the case with Prince of Persia. And nevertheless, of course, he is actually no stranger to criticizing Ubisoft. He actually did criticize the Star Wars Outlaws Ultimate Edition. I don't love the artificially, uh, oh, excuse me, artificiality of pricing structures post-retail. Use the inflated base price to upsell a subscription and use vague content promises to inflate Ultimate Editions to make the base price look better. It all seems a bit dangerous and disconnected from the community. He is an absolute 
winner in my books. I mean, this is somebody who gets it, who is in tune with what gamers want, probably because he himself is actually a real gamer. I know that's also kind of rare within the industry. It seems that there's so many people within it that just do not play video games or do not look past the game that they are making, but he clearly sees what gamers want and how we are feeling. I think a game should be priced accordingly with its quality, breadth, and depth. I'm not against higher prices, but this arbitrary uh, uniformity just doesn't make sense to me. It feels so unserious. I totally and completely agree. I am fine with paying a high price for a game that gives you a lot of content. A lot of people do love Baldur's Gate 3, and I know a lot of people would pay a lot of money for that game. A lot of people love Elden Ring. Like myself, I would pay a lot of money for Elden Ring. Um, there's plenty of games out there that I do think deserve high price tags, but it's like, I play a lot of games on this channel and I review a lot of games on this channel and I always talk about the price and whether it was worth it or not. And like 90% of the time I say games are not worth their price tag. They are not worth 60 or $70. Most of the time they're worth like 30 to $40. And if games were priced, judging by the length and the quality, if like Star Wars Outlaws was priced at $40, it would have sold 3 million copies. And as far as we know, it's only sold 1 million copies. If you make something cheaper, yes, you are losing out on the individual price tag that's higher, but you are making more money overall because you're getting potentially millions of more customers. So this is somebody who completely understands what we have been criticizing within the industry and especially at a company like Ubisoft over the past couple of years. And it's always fantastic to see somebody just get it and come out and state what we're all thinking and kind of defend gamers instead of just simping and shilling for these large companies. So I, of course, will be keeping my eye on his social media to see if he releases any other really amazing takes. But this Baldur's Gate 3 dev is blasting Ubisoft sales strategy, saying if gamers should get used to not owning their games, then developers must get used to not having jobs. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.